good morning students today let me explain you about a concept or a topic called evolution of temporal fossae in reptiles what are temporal fossae temporal fossae are nothing but a kind of cavities or the arch that are present in the skull region of these reptiles as well as in the later vertebrate animals and you have already studied about the classification of class reptilia wherein uh, we had come across with some uh, orders like anapsida synapsida eurapsida parapsida and diapsida so here is the picture or the slide which will show you the different types of those uh, reptiles in uh, with reference to this temporal fossae uh actually these reptiles they have originated from a kind of primitive or the stem reptiles called hylonomus and as you observe here uh, from that hylonomus uh, type of ancestral stock uh, these various types of these reptiles have evolved like anapsids eurapsids diapsids synapsids so this is another photograph or the slide showing you the uh different uh, uh, origin or uh, the origin of this origin and evolution of this temporal fossae in reptiles you know at the base there'll be the amniotes and you know what are amniotes are amniotes are the animals which develop extra embryonic membranes during their early embryonic life and from those amniotes these uh, reptiles like synapsids and your you reptilia have evolved in the beginning and as you see here in the skull region of these reptiles or in other animals uh, especially in case of vertebrates there will be then there will be an orbit where the eyes are located which is called eye socket here and behind that uh, orbit of the eye socket there will be the fenestra which is nothing but the fossae and from this u reptilia there developed the type of reptiles called anapsids and diapsids and as you clearly see here see here in this slide in case of anapsid there is no arch or there is no fossae that means fossae are totally absent in anapsids whereas in diapsids as you observe here there are a pair of fossae are seen and because of which they are referred to as diapsids coming to the further details about this or origin and evolution of fossae in reptiles reptiles have evolved from labyrinthodont type of amphibians 60 million years after the amphibians arose that is reptiles have evolved from this labyrinthodont type of amphibians after the amphibians arose about 60 million years ago and during the course of evolution four changes are evident in case of these reptiles they are evolution of stronger more effective jaw mechanisms and evolution of more effective locomotion on land which is very essential for their terrestrial life and development of amniotic egg uh, that is also very essential because these reptiles used to lay cladoic type of eggs within which they cannot uh, supplement the nutrients from their body directly after the eggs are being laid and they should have uh, these extra embryonic membranes which can protect and nourish the developing embryo inside the eggs and the development of scales that is also one very important adaptive radiation that is developed in case of these reptiles for terrestrial mode of life and these four changes separate the reptiles from amphibians because these characters were not seen in amphibians so in that way they are said to be slightly evolved and evolution of the skull the skull is a skeletal structure found in the head region that you know and these reptiles had dermal skull or dermal skull roof or dermatocranium you know the term derma refers to skin so in case of these reptiles a shield of membrane or dermal bone covering the top and sides of the head in reptiles which extend down to the jaw rims 
with a marginal row of teeth that means they do not have a very solid type of skull but they have a dermal type of skull which is said to be dermatocranium and in amphibians and stem reptiles the dermal skull roof is unbroken except for openings for the eyes and nasal openings and in these animals the temporal muscles which close the jaw are shut inside the solid dermal roof of the cheek or temporal region of the skull and when the jaws close the muscles shorten and expand in breadth and there is a little room for expansion under the solid dermal shield and this has limited the size of the muscle so in the stem reptiles and in case of amphibians they had the type of skull with the help of which they could not wide open their mouth but one common thing that we observe in case of these reptiles is they have short and slender neck but the head is quite massive and the neck has to bear the weight the total weight of this particular head region having skull in it for which it has undergone some modifications that is what we can see here in this topic and very early in reptile history changes to ancestral condition occurred in the nature of muscle attachment to the lower jaws and the skull and these changes had to do with the development of stronger and more efficient jaw muscles because of which they can wide open their mouth and can consume the prey which is bigger than bigger than their own body size and in several several lept, reptile lineages except in case of anapsids openings developed in the solid dermal skull roof so in case of anapsids as we have seen already in one of the previous slides there is no arch or fossae but in other kind of reptiles we can come across with those fossae and the jaw muscles go through these temporal openings and attach to outer surface of the cranium permitting the development of stronger jaw muscles and more efficient opening mechanisms and these openings have evolved independently several times in different reptile lineages and resulting in the openings that are in different places on the skull in different groups and these changes separate the reptiles from the amphibians particularly the evolution of stronger more effective jaw mechanisms so this is another slide showing you the different types of skulls in reptiles and that forms a very important basis for the classification of these reptiles into anapsida synapsida parapsida uriapsida and diapsida reptiles have big jaws and the large head and too heavy which is too heavy for the neck to support it that's what i already told you and the vacuities or fossae lighten the skull and provide space for the jaw muscles so the importance or the significance of development of this fossae or fenestri or vacuities which will uh, make the skull to become light uh, so that the neck can uh, so the neck can efficiently uh, bear the weight of that uh, skull or the head region and can move the head region very efficiently and also this provides the space for jaw muscles actually the term uh, actually the term uh, these fossae or what we call, uh, call the different types of reptiles as anapsida synapsida diapsida and parapsida wherein we come across with a common term called apes which is a derivative of a latin terminology which means arch and the number and types of arches give the skull types and their names temporal fenestri of the fossae have been used to classify amniotes by scientists by name osborn in 1903 and the taxa such as anapsida diapsida uriapsida and synapsida were named after their type of temporal fenestration and the temporal fenestri are large holes on the sides of the skull and the function of these holes has long been debated uh, 
case in nineteen twenty four, and many scientists believe that they allow the muscles to expand and lengthen, resulting in greater bulk of jaw musculature. And the longer muscle fibers allow an increase in the gap of the jaw to handle large prey. So this was first noticed by Perlot in nineteen sixty nine. So these are some important significances of having temporal fossae in reptiles. Coming to the skull in reptiles, you know the reptilian skull shows variations in the presence or absence of vacuities. Are fossae in the temporal region, and the temporal fossae are developed in reptiles to make the skull light and also to provide space for accommodating powerful jaw muscles. And the temporal fossae are larger holes on the sides of the skull, on the basis of of presence or absence and the number of temporal fossae or fenestrae. The reptilian skulls have been classified into following types like anapsida, diapsida, uriapsida, parapsida, and synapsid skulls, which thing we have already discussed. Coming to the first type, anapsid skull. Anapsid means without arch. Ana means without, as you know, which is meaning that they have no fossae in their skulls, and this is the most primitive form of the skull of reptiles. Found in the stem reptiles like cartilosaurians, and among living reptiles, it is found in chelonians such as tortoises and turtles, which we already discussed in classification of reptiles. And the roof of the skull is completely bony, without any temporal vacuities or fossae, and it is heavy and also strong. And turtles have small head and jaws without teeth. And jaw muscles, and this will be the picture showing you the details of that anapsid skull. So this type of skull is present in Chelonia, that is living reptiles, which includes turtles, tortoises, terrapins, and they have anapsid type of skull, and they have small head and edentate jaws, less weight, neck can bear the weight. So as they do not have this uh, fenestrae, the head becomes slightly heavier when compared to the other uh, other reptile skulls. So the neck can bear the weight here. Then, <coughs> diapsid skull, second type. It is found in spinodon, which is the living fossil, and found in snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and dinosaurs. And this type of skull has two pairs of temporal fossae, a pair each on their a pair each on either side of the skull, and the superior temporal fossae is surrounded by parietal above and post orbital and squamosal below. So this is what you can make out the supra temporal fossae. So it is called supra temporal fossae because it lies above the. Have a temporal bone or the temporal region, and the inferior temporal fossae is guarded by the postorbital and squamosal bones above and jugal and quadrato jugal below. So here you can make out this uh, infra temporal fossae, and that is being guarded by squamosal jugal, quadrato jugal, and other bones of the skull region. And this type of skull is lighter and has more space for the attachment of jaw muscles because of two cavities or the vacuities they have. And dinosaurs and crocodiles also have a pair of pre-orbital cavities or vacuities anterior to the eye orbits. Coming to the other features of diapsid skull, this type of skull has two temporal vacuities. On either side of the skull, and the superior temporal vacuity is surrounded by parietal above and postorbital and squamosal below, and the inferior temporal vacuity is guarded by the postorbital and squamosal above and jugal and quadrato jugal below. And this type of skull, as I told you already, it is lighter and has more space for the attachment of jaw muscles. It is found in a large number of living reptiles, 
and also in extinct dinosaurs. So dinosaurs and crocodiles also have a pair of preorbital vacuities anterior to the eye orbits. Coming to the uriapsid type of skull, uriapsid means wide arch, uri means broad and this type of skull was present in the marine extinct reptiles such as the ichthyosaurus, plesiosaurus and placodonts. And the skull had a single pair of temporal fossae bordered by parietal, postorbital and squamosal bones. The uriapsids arose from the diapsids which had two pairs of fenestrae but sealed one pair of the openings to strengthen their skulls for the life under water. You know, the life under water is different uh, than that of terrestrial mode of life. That's why uh, in case of these uriapsid skulls, uh, that uh, fenestrae are, by, are being bordered by parietal, postorbital and squamosal bones. And this is what the picture showing you the details of this uriapsid type of skulls wherein you can see the temporal opening of the fenestra here of the fossae which is being guarded by postorbital and then squamosal bone and parietal bone uh, on the top. So these are other features of uriapsid skull. Uriapsid means wide arch which thing I told you already and they have one fenestra high on the both the sides of the skull and the uriapsids are represented by the marine reptiles which thing also I told already <coughs> and the uriapsids arose from the diapsids which had two fenestrae but sealed one of the openings to strengthen their skulls for life under water. So wherein plesiosaurs was an aquatic giant reptile with a long neck, small skull and fish eating jaws. And its limbs were modified into paddles for swimming and there was no tail fin but a small tail. And the skull had a single pair of temporal vacuities bordered by parietal, postorbital and squamosal bones which thing I already shown you in the diagram. And the maxilla and premaxilla had sharp teeth for fish catching. Coming to parapsid type of skull and this type of skull was found in ichthyosaurs which included a dolphin like aquatic reptiles that preyed upon fishes or other aquatic animals. And the parapsid skull had only one pair of temporal fossae on the upper side which is guarded by two additional bones namely postfrontal and supratemporal which pushed the postorbital and squamosal bones towards the lower side. So that is what the feature which you can make out here. So they have uh, this, this parapsid type of skull had only one pair of temporal fossae on the upper side and they are being guarded by two additional bones namely postfrontal that is what you can make out here and the supratemporal bone whereas which is being pushing the postorbital and squamosal bound, uh, bones towards the lower side. You can see this postorbital that has been pushed downwards and even the squamosal bone has been pushed downwards. And this condition has been called parapsid but it only represents a minor, minor variation from the uriapsid pattern. So these are the features of this parapsid type of skull. Coming to synapsid skull, this type of skull was found in extinct reptiles like Pelicosauria and the mammal like therapsid reptiles. And the skull has a pair of had a pair of temporal fossae that is one inferior temporal fossae on each side. So unlike in case of parapsid, here you can see the pair of temporal fossae which are there on the lower side of the orbit and hence it is known as synapsid type of skull and it is being guarded by post orbital and squamosal bones above you see uh, in the previous uh, type like parapsid these post orbital bone and squamosal bones were present below the fenestrae but here uh, this uh, 
post orbital and squamosal bones are present on the top of that uh, fenestrae okay so this is what the important difference that you can make out while the jugal and quadrato jugal are present below so below this uh, fenestrae you can make out this quadrato jugal and jugal bone so this is all with reference to this uh, diagram of synapsid skull and this type of skull was found in dimetrodon that is pelicosauria and the mammal like therapsid reptiles that is cynognathus and in this there was only one inferior temporal vacuity on each side of the skull but it was guarded by post orbital and squamosal bones above and jugal and quadrato jugal bones below so actually the term synapsid means together arch that is the synapsid skulls have the arch that is fenestrae which are together that is joint natured and the synapsids were the dominant land vertebrates from the late carboniferous period that is about 280 to 230 million years ago to the end of triassic period that was 230 to 195 million years ago and although the synapsids were reptiles they later gave rise to mammals so this is all about the features of synapsid skull so with this let me stop and continue the rest in next class